click that and hello good morning this is jennifer and this is the dwelling richly bible study really glad that you're with us we are on part two today of a two-part lesson um so it's a uh, we are on lesson 12 day six that's um 12 through 17 of chapter 12 so grab your bible a lot of 12s in that introduction a lot of 12s anyway grab your bible grab your bible study and let's get started and then go ahead over get ready to go over to uh the screen so you can see the bible study and all that good stuff so get yourself situated i'm going to get my water going look take a look over at lucy what are you sniffing she's been in the backyard her feet are soaking wet which means after this bible study finishes recording where am i put it in my water after the bible study i'm going to go figure out why your feet are soaking wet and why <laughs> Oh my gosh, she's like wandering around like a no band. And, and how I'm going to clean up all the little footprints all over my kitchen. Anyway, let's pray and we'll get started. Enough about Lucy. Let's get into the word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today, the chance to be together in your word. Bless our time together right now. We love you. We love your word. And uh, just give us insight today. And help us to really see and not put, put in to the word what we want to see, but really see you and to draw out what uh, you would have us to learn in Jesus name. Amen. All right, let's do this. Hop over to Facebook me and say hi real quick, still praying. And there we go. Let me get over here to the lesson. <clears throat> Scroll down to day six. Where are you? Day five. There's day six. Okay. And let's get a little bit bigger so you can see. All right, so as always, we'll start today with our memory verse, and we'll read that, and then we'll jump down and reread um, Hebrews 12, 12 through 17, like we did yesterday, but this is a two-part lesson, so let's get this a little bit out of the way and bigger so we can see. <clears throat> but let's go ahead over to Hebrews 12. We'll do 1 through 2, and then we'll do 12 through 17. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Praise God, he is, right? All right, and let's go ahead and do our reading now through uh, 12. Uh, chapter 12, verses 12 through 17. We did this yesterday, but again, it's part two, so let's do it again. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God and then no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble and by it many become defiled that no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterward, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. This is a pretty, pretty intense story. And um, let's go ahead and dig into our passage today. But let's go, let's go back and do a, a review first of our responses um, in our notes from yesterday to Hebrews 12, 12 through 13. I should say day five there, not day, not day four. Pretty sure. But the point is, I'd like you to review 12, 12 through 13 and summarize the concept in 10 words or less. And that is, again, from day uh, five, not day four. Um, I remember why. That's because I kept on editing and I forgot to change that part of it. Anyway, here we go. Here's my 10 words. You think about yours. If we could summarize, actually, maybe I'll show that scripture to you again. Um, lift your drooping hands, make your, um, strengthen your weak knees, make your path straight. Uh, so what is lame may not put out of joy, but rather be healed. So I summarize it like this. Take care of yourself so you can look after others. I shouldn't have said that so quickly. Forget I said that. Do your own work. <laughs> I know some of you actually come to this, this video time having already completed the study, but some of you are just cold and, and not cold, like in the sense of so cold, but in the sense of you're coming at it cold and fresh and bright right here. Um, and that, I hate it when I over-influence your writing, especially when it's a personal thought. But put your own spin on that. Give your 10 words or less concept and just tighten that up 
and uh, bring that into focus. So what was the focus there? Because we want to launch from that into today's today's focus for the second half of that. So the first three ex exhortations were personal and internal. Now we look around and see how we can relate with one another. What five exhortations does the author give in 12, 14 through 16? So let's go back over here to that lesson so you can see that. Look these verses up in the Amplified Bible or several versions to compare the wording. So um, Amplified is great. Several, several versions to read these is also helpful. I think I made a link for you. Oh, look at that. I did. And I'm so glad I copied this because it did it again where it wrote over. I'll get back to that in a minute. All right, but let's go ahead and read that. And I went ahead and made it available to you. And in the English Standard, the New International, here's the Christian Standard, the CSB Bible, the New King James, and the New American Standard. What Bible do you use? I'm curious. I know a lot of you have, have joined the ESV uh, because we've been, that's basically what we're using in this study is the ESV. But I'm curious, um, for me, before I, I switched over to ESV, I was big time using the, um, big time, trying not to let that drop, but it just dropped. Um, really used mostly the NIV. Before that, I used NASB. It's the Bible I grew up was was New American Standard. Then in 1984, I um, was given by my father and mother a new international version, and, and I started using that. And then in about 2012, what year is this right now? 18? Oh, no, so it wouldn't have been 2012. Probably around uh, about a year and a half ago, just recently, I switched, maybe two years ago, I switched full-time to the ESV. I was part-time here and there, but now I'm full-time ESV. Oh. And I've taught plenty of lessons on why I switched. If you're curious, you could ask, uh, but I won't go into that right now. I already went into it too much as it is. <laughs> so here we go. What I want to do is, let me get back to the lesson since it went away. Let me get called up again. Ooh, we got some fun stuff coming up. There's the lesson. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, look those verses up and um, write them down in whatever version uh, you're uh, using there. So number one, strive for what? Peace with everyone. Peace with everyone. And, and we're going to apply the, the verb over that phrase again because it does carry over. It's a compound sentence. Grammar nerds love this kind of Bible study, like me, actually, uh, because you remember that um, all your nouns and adjectives and adverbs and phrases and how they apply, okay? And so that's why I put it in parentheses, strive for, because it continues. So strive for peace with everyone, strive for holiness. What happens without holiness? What does it say? Well, no one will see the Lord. No one will see the Lord without holiness. All right, and then um, see to it that, and what are we going to see to it that? Well, that no one, no root, uh, I mean, no one fails to obtain the grace of God. No one fails to obtain the grace of God. And then, of course, the see to it continues and goes over this next phrase. See to it that no root of bitterness, exactly, springs up and causes trouble. No root of bitterness is coming up. What happens because of bitterness? So there's, again, I'm just trying to walk you through breaking down the scripture. Well, you may become defiled, which is the opposite of holy. What has he just said? Be holy. And what, what, can be, what could lead to the opposite of holiness? Bitterness taking root in us. Such a great reminder. See to it, continuing on number five, see to it, no one is sexually <clears throat> immoral like Esau. See to it, no one is, again, like Esau, um, and there was a lot of ways of saying this, but unholy, profane, secular, unspiritual, godless, worldly. Um, it's, the idea is unfit to access God um, because they approach him outside of faith. That is the, that's the whole concept there. And uh, Esau is a powerful and unfortunate reminder of that in terms of his choices, what that led to. All right, so highlight the two strive for and the three see to it admonitions in your Bible. Just take the minute to do that. Get those marked up there. One of the things that I do is if I want to connect things, I might highlight um, the verb um, and what it's going over in the same colors. Make sure those are in the same colors. Or I might make a pencil line and draw in my Bible. All right, hey, we get a two for one today on the Greek right there in this passage. So um, for starters, um, 
uh, diako is a Greek word translated strive in 1214. It means to aggressively chase, like a hunter, pursuing a catch or pursuing a prize. It almost always refers to a, the negative sense of someone persecuting someone else. So the author is saying, in the same way that you're feeling persecuted, go for peace and holiness with that kind of earnestness. Pursue peace in spite of persecution. All right. So uses this word here, um, strive. And uh, again, what has he been talking about? He's been talking about how they've been driven after they've had people persecuting and striving for them persecuting them. Um, he says, you know what? Flip that around. You, you persecute for peace, <laughs> in a sense. You strive that hard for peace and, um, and make that uh, a priority for you and do it with that level of intensity. Isn't that a great way to be reminded? Isn't the Greek language so powerful? All right, here's your two for one. So the next one is the word translated see to it See to it in 1215 is the Greek word episcopontes, episcopontes. And this is from the, the prefix epi, which is a, on or about something, epi, and the root scopio, from which we get our word scope. Yeah. <laughs> so literally, it means to scope out and over. So it means oversight, it means oversight, or to look at a situation with real caring interest. The prefix epi implies looking with appropriate concern, a looking on that requires action. All right? Isn't it great to dig into the Greek and get that, that deeper perspective? I, I think it is. All right, so number four, give personal and practical explanations for peace and holiness in your life. Peace, what it is, and holiness, what it is, and, and, and uh, peace and holiness and what it's not in your life. What does that, what does that look like? What, what should it look like? And what, what are examples of what it doesn't look like in your life? Um, take a minute to, to think through that and make that personal. Um, you know, that when we take things like that and we make them truly personal, we try to understand them rather than just reading, oh, peace and holiness. I'm going to have peace and holiness in my life. It, it's, it's too easy to gloss over that. What does it look like? What does peace look like in your life? Are you experiencing that kind of peace? We're supposed to be striving for it, striving for peace, striving for holiness, we should have an idea of what we're shooting for and not just have a little vocabulary word out there, peace and holiness. We should really understand what it looks like. So take a minute to think about that. I'll give you time on your own. You can pause me, those, those of you who are watching the replay, and uh, write that down and then share them. Go ahead and leave a comment below and share with everyone else in the group. What does peace look like and what does holiness look like in your life? And then what is it not? What are, what are things that might happen in your life that aren't? peaceful and aren't um, to the end of peace and to the end of holiness. All right, number five. God's word is so clear on the impact of how we live for peace and holiness. Let's summarize each of these. So I've given this a link. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see if it wants to uh, clear my screen again. Yep, it did. Interesting. All right, so let's take a look at each of these. Um, 1 Peter 3, 15, but in your hearts, honor Christ, the Lord is holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, but do it with gentleness and respect. All right, so back to, I have to get this back up again. I'll put it over here since we've used that one already. It's not weird how it does that sometimes and doesn't. I need to, I need to see the common issue there of why it keeps doing that because um, it didn't used to happen like that. There was an update on my on, on Microsoft Word, I think, and it, it did change a few other things. I wonder if that's what happened. All right. Um, back to that. All right. So summarize the following there. Um, 1 Peter 3.15. Honor Christ as holy. Be prepared to make a defense. If you ask for a reason for hope, do it with gentleness and respect. So we have Peace and holiness, and here I would summarize gentleness and respect as a, as a peaceful response. And um, as a result of that, when people ask, ask us, um, because we've honored Christ as holy, because we're living that kind of life, people should notice a difference, and we're going to get asked, I would think, about it. All right, let's try this again. I'm sure it'll, you know, instead of risking it, I don't like bopping around. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just type it in Colossians 3.17. 
and Ephesians 4.29. Let's type that in and just do it. Um, Colossians 3.17 and Ephesians 4.29. All right. All right, so Colossians 3.17. <clears throat> Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Are you seeing the connections there? Are you seeing how important it is um, to have this life of impact? Because it impacts how others see and others receive the gospel. There is that big impact there. I don't think there's anything more disturbing to the way the world sees people who claim the name of Christ than when Christians live without peace and holiness. Not only are we to personally strive for peace and holiness, we are to see to it that others do the same. What? <laughs> I thought we were supposed to keep our eyes on Jesus and let everyone else just do the same. I thought we were supposed to, we weren't supposed to judge others. Is that what the Bible teaches? Hmm. If we're actually, truly, really, honestly striving to live lives of peace and personal holiness, how will that impact our ability to live out Hebrews 12, 15 through 16, which says, see to it no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled, that no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. All right, so with dire consequences, as verse 17 explains. Do you see the personal responsibility in verses 12 to 13, and then how that applies then to 14 to 15? 12 and 13 begins with the log basically in our own eye, in a sense. Um, in other words, it focuses on us getting our spiritual life in order. And then moving out, we have peace with everyone. Um, and so we have the moral high ground, the integrity, the um, spiritual wisdom, the insight, the ability to speak into and encourage one another to um, strive for peace, strive for holiness, and then reach in and don't let anyone fail to obtain the grace of God. <clears throat> Make that a priority. Don't let roots of bitterness grow up. So you'd have to notice them. You have to pluck them out. You, you have to be very active. So back over here to our study. All right. In other words, how can we live out 12, 15 through 16 if we aren't doing 14 through 15 first, right? Right. <laughs> okay. So I guess what my point is, and, and hoping that you'll see this as you do the scripture, is we need to be active in each other's lives. That the Christian faith isn't a faith that's isolated, that we aren't all at home doing our Bible study, and then there we go. Check. Did my Bible study. You know, we don't just come to church and check, went to church. Um, that's an abomination to God. I'll just put it out there. I don't think that's anything remotely close to what the body of Christ should be doing. And yet that is the dominant way I see the church acting. Do the Bible study, check it's done. I go to church, check it's done. And it, no one's doing it with a callous attitude like I'm just saying it like that. But honestly, that's, that's the end result of it. Um, and then, of course, there's people who aren't even doing any of the above and they're claiming the name of Christ still. So what are we to do? Well, we need to move in on ourselves first as this passage has instructed us. And then um, as a community move in and uh, be there with others as well. All right. So what about Esau? <laughs> what? That is a weird closing. I just did on that. Did I? I really goofed up on that. All right. So what about Esau? Read uh, Genesis 25. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste. I don't want to risk it um, not giving me, not getting me back over to here. Let's go ahead and read that together and, and let's get that story in our brains. And I'll figure out later why I, uh, the closing looks so odd. All right, Genesis 25, 29 to 34. Let's get this story down. Maybe you're not even familiar with it, but here's basically what happens in the summary part. Once when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field and he was exhausted. And Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stew. For I am exhausted. Therefore, his name is called Edom. Jacob said, and the note on Edom sounds like the Hebrew word for red. It's just right down here. That should be in your Bible as well, those little footnotes. Um, Jacob said, sell me your birthright now. Esau said, 
I am about to die of what use is my birthright to me. Jacob said, swear to me now. So he swore to him and he sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Then Esau despised his birthright. He got rid of it and he realized what he'd done. And he's like, well, I hated it anyway. It's not my, I didn't need it anyway, right? You end up acting like that. And that actually has a double meaning and they're not only despised it um, in that sense, but it also despised it is in the act of putting food and, and satisfying his, his need in that moment, um, he acted in a despicable way. He, he was despising toward his birthright as a result of that. All right. So my guess is, because I always type up answer keys for this as we go, my guess is I just fail to um, wipe that out and turn that into my red text that I normally do. And then somehow I just didn't give you your header that says read the word, which is what I normally do as well. All right. So um, I'll ask those of you who are listening to the Bible study, you always get these little extras. If I do the, if I fix any edits there or edit anything, um, just summarize the story there and um, make mention of, of uh, what, what was going on with Esau and why he is mentioned in this particular passage as an example of basically a, a cautionary tale. Don't end up like Esau. Don't do it like this. This is what happened to Esau. So just summarize that and put your answer in there. And um, those people who are doing the Bible study at home are going to be going, I don't get this. Join the Bible study. Then you'll understand. <laughs> oh. Bonus points for you guys being here on the Bible study. Okay. Let me go ahead and uh, wrap it up. And I'll read um, the closing, uh, my closing thoughts here for you. Esau is a reminder to me today that to see Jesus, consider Jesus, fix my eyes on Jesus. There are plenty of opportunities each day for me to squander the great reward I have by crossing the line like Esau did. In fact, the word translated unholy in referring to Esau is better translated profane, or we might say secular. It literally means unauthorized crossing of a threshold. Esau tossed out his eternal and spiritual reward for the immediate gratification of the now, in this case, a hot meal. He then lost access to God. He was unfit to approach God because of his blatant lack of faith. The author keeps circling back to this exhortation for us to get our spiritual priorities in order and to come alongside one another and care for that others do the same. While we're fixing our eyes on Jesus, we cannot neglect to notice one another. We must lift our own drooping hands. We must notice... <laughs> Well, I might not want to scroll so fast. Um, we must lift our own drooping hands and we must notice when others are drooping too. We can't, as my grandma used to say, be so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. This isn't an individual race. It's a team sport. We absolutely must take care of one another. There's no getting around the point in this passage. There's none of this, my faith is personal and private business. That's an Esau mindset. See how that turned out for him? No, our faith is personal and that we are accountable to God to personally receive and believe faithfully in Jesus, but it is in community in what we, um, but it is community and that we have to pay attention and strive for peace with everyone. Don't allow anyone to fail to obtain God's grace, pluck out any roots of bitterness and care enough to reach out to one another and into one another's lives, right? That's, I hope, a strong encouragement and challenge for you today to really think about um, how you're living the Christian life. And if that's true for you, are, are you finding yourself isolated and caught up in um, the busyness of worldly things and you're neglecting to really be present in the community of Christ? And I would encourage you to reflect on the words that we've read throughout this entire book. And especially even when in the author himself said earlier, don't neglect the, the coming together, right? The coming together as a, as a community of Christ. So what does that look like? We strive for peace with everyone. We strive for holiness. We work on it in our own life, in our own heart. And then we see to it that it's happening in others. And, you know, the beauty of this is some of you are thinking, well, that could turn me into a busybody and I don't want to bother any other people. It's like, that's sin. Of course you don't want to do that. But you have to be spiritually mature so you don't become a busybody. You don't, you're not a nosy Nelly. <laughs> you're not getting into other people's business for the sake of getting into people's business. You're in, the, in people's business for the sake of love and peace and unity and the holiness of our church and bringing everybody together. And so you're going to pray for wisdom. You're going to pray for discernment because I know it's on your heart. Some of you feel like, well, I don't want to really do this because 
people you know might think I'm in their business type of thing. Yeah, actually, if you're spirit filled and you're living it out in God's way, I find that people don't see it that way. God blesses that kind of relationship. He goes before you and he can help make an open heart so that when you are moving into someone's life that you see that might have a root of bitterness. This happens oftentimes in the church when someone starts, oh, let's just say, um, maybe someone's critical about the way worship is going. Oh, it's too loud. Oh, they too many songs, too few songs. You know, I mean, no one's ever satisfied because in the same week that poor worship pastor will get a comment like it's too many songs and then it'll be too few songs. It's too quiet. It's too loud. I'm honest to goodness. I, it's, it happens. So point being when someone let's say makes a critical comment or is frustrated or irritated with the way the church does something um, and they speak it to you, you know, rather than dismissing what they say, hey, you shouldn't criticize, but then, and also rather than observing it, you should say, what's the end goal of the church? We're trying to, we're trying to grow the kingdom and to point people back to Christ and point people back to the bigger picture and the goal and to not just receive little petty criticisms like that without letting them go, but to really be mindful and loving in the way that we engage with people. So, you know, it's going to take a while for us to develop the skill to see how this kind of holy living works out in a practical sense, but you can come before the Father and ask for wisdom on how to do that. I hope that you will. I hope today's Bible study is a reminder to you of the importance of all that and uh, our need as a church to not just let things go, uh, not let roots of bitterness grow up, and to really truly see what that looks like in real life to strive for peace and holiness. All right. That concludes our lesson for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to share your thoughts on that fill in the blank one where you were, you know, seeing what that looks like. Oh, and then I also ask what Bible you're using. Are you using ESV, NASB, NIV, and all that? Uh, I'd be curious about all those. I'm mostly curious about the spiritual application stuff and uh, how how you're applying what you're learning um, in in uh, your in your life. And so, write in a comment, and better yet, share it share this video, share this podcast, click the share button and, um, and just let other people know your, what you're learning and what you're gaining from it. This isn't self-promotion and it kind of can feel like that. And I, I apologize if it does, but honestly, we're trying to grow the community at our church. And this is a way that it grows is when people like you get out there and actually share and comment. This is what I'm learning because people see that in your life and they like, I want that too. Like, where are you doing this and how is that happening? So I apologize if it feels like it's self-promotion. It, I really don't intend it to be that way at all. My heart is to grow our our, our church fellowship and to, to strengthen other people spiritually. And so thank you for sharing it, letting people know that you're out there and you're learning and you're gaining um, understanding and you're personally growing, which I know you are because a lot of you text me and, and uh, message me about that. And I love that. So share that with others as well. Today's your day to do that. All right, that's it for today. God bless you. Remember, you are always loved and prayed for. And I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.